He loved to drive and the car never failed him. So this was his freedom, really. His freedom, yes. Behind the wheel. And Irv put all those miles on the Irv. Uh, I put it maybe three or four. Ah, uh, you put maybe three or four. Miles. <laughs> For many years, Volvos were square and boxy. Serious cars for sensible people. You know, the type, university professors, the kind who wear the corduroy jacket with the leather elbow pads and would occasionally smoke a pipe. And then came the iconic P1800. It debuted in 1961 and was in production for 12 years. By today's standards, the car is slow and antiquated, but is typical of its time. Now, not only did the P1800 wow people with its designs, it earned itself a moment of pop culture fame as a hero car for Simon Templer, better known as The Saint. That's right, before Roger Moore became James Bond and jumped behind the wheel of an Aston Martin, he was driving a P1800. It was cool then, and I'd say still cool now. But the most famous P1800, and arguably the most famous Volvo, didn't belong to a British PI. It belonged to a Long Island middle school science teacher named Irv Gordon. And it's famous because Irv put 3.25 million miles on his P1800 all by himself. That makes it the highest mileage non-commercial privately owned car of all time, according to the Guinness Book of World Records. When I met Irv back in 2013 in LA, the car had 2.8 million miles on the clock, and ironically, the car had broken down on my street whilst Irv was shooting a commercial for Volvo. The car has had two engine rebuilds and two paint jobs, but basically it's the same Volvo that rolled out of the factory more than 50 years ago. Unfortunately, Irv passed away in 2018, but the P1800 soldiers on in his honor with a little help from Nino Gambino, Irv's friend and mechanic for the last four decades. Tell me about how you met Irv. I met Irv in 1979. I was working at one of the three dealerships I worked at on Long Island. I saw him, I recognized him, and I went up to him and I said to him, you're Irv Gordon, and he said yes. I go, where is the car? And the car was right outside. And he, we started talking and we became friends and I started working on this car since then. How many miles were on the car when you met him? Less than a million because I was not involved then. What year was that? It was about 1979, 1980, early 80s. Volvo was definitely thinking ahead the fact that they started documenting high mileage cars yeah. in the 70s, right? Yeah which was really a great asset for the brand Volvo to show how far a car could actually go. He loved to drive and the car never failed him. Why did he love to drive so much? The car was very comfortable for him, you know, and he just enjoyed the driving. It was something that he gave him a way out, a way of see United States of America because okay. he loved it. So this was his freedom, really. His freedom, yes. Behind the wheel. And Irv put all those miles on it himself. Irv, I, I put it maybe three or four. Ah, uh, you put maybe three or four. Miles. miles. <laughs> Tell me what your favorite thing is about driving the car. The heritage of the car, and I like that it's a Volvo, and I like that Irv Gordon, for me, is always there. You know? He's right here. He's right here. So much character here in the glove box. I see drill bits, yeah. fuses, because he, screws, he metric was, screws. He was an end up person. You've got a need for speed. Oh yeah. You're a race car driver. Yeah. Tell me about Earth's driving style. Smooth. Smooth. Relaxing. Smooth is fast and so. Yeah, he doesn't have to get there today. He got can it. get there tomorrow and okay. it's fine with him. Got it. But if somebody tells me you gotta be there at 12 o'clock tomorrow. I guarantee you, he'll be there at 12 o'clock tomorrow. So Irv was a punctual guy as well? Very punctual. You're a 
a Volvo guy. How did you get into Volvo? Through my father. My father wanted to buy a Volvo in 1973. He asked the manager of the dealership, he'll buy the car if they take one of his kids as a apprentice. Oh. And I was the chosen one and I Got loved it. it. I loved it. I did my apprenticeship, became a mechanic, and then I moved it to the States. Now, when I think of Volvo, I always think of these practical station wagons. You know, I don't necessarily think of a sporty image with Volvo, but yes. we cannot not talk about the scene yeah. whilst we're driving a P1800. And I think that really put the Volvo P1800 on the map. What do you think? I think so too, but you know, Irv Gordon was already driving and put the miles on it. In Europe, it was the same car and in the United States was Herb Gordon's car. It's, it's unbelievable how many people know about Herb Gordon. Yeah. The achievement of doing over three million miles in a car that he loved, that still has the original motor. Definitely. It's, it's unbelievable. Even though today Volvo has moved on from the P1800 and they're beautiful cars today, and they're as safe as ever, but if you look at Herb Gordon, People don't see Herb Gordon, people see Volvo. Yeah. When they see this car, they see Herb Gordon. For me, it's great that the car is drivable. I have no interest in cars with 500 miles. This to me is like the ultimate story because it's Herb's story. Yep. It's more than just the sum of the parts of this Volvo P1800. It's this guy's pretty much most of his life was spent in this car. In this car. I'm all about cars with stories. Just like Nino said, it's really the sum of the parts that make this car special. Not just the motor and body, it's the experience that Irv and Nino had, the friendship, the bond between them. Now this car, it isn't the next big thing. It's beyond that, it's a milestone car. Volvo owns it now and it's still being driven, not stored in some museum. And what I love about Irv's car is the fact that he drove it every day for the majority of his life. He made some memorable moments, lasting friendships, saw the world, and along the way, the car became an icon. To me, this is how it should be. Too often, people put cars in garages not wanting to put miles on them, waiting for them to go up in value. That's not what the cars are for. Irv had it right. Whether you buy a P1800 or a prancing pony, the true value comes from the experience of the drive and ownership, not from the profit you may make when you sell the car.